Last time, we finally created a functional CPU. Albeit limited with only 256 bytes of RAM, it was capable of loading and executing instructions, and manipulating data. Today we are going to upgrade the CPU and give it a 16-bit address bus for 64K of available RAM, as well as improve the cycle time of the instructions for faster program execution, and test it on the same setup as in the last video. So stay tuned as we make our simple CPU more useful. Have you ever wondered how you can make your own CPU or microcontroller? Have you ever been curious about field programmable gate arrays, also known as FPGAs, but find them to be mysterious black boxes? Or wish you had a microcontroller-like device with a larger memory address or a wider data bus? Well, stay tuned as we delve into the world of FPGAs and create a CPU and eventual microcontroller from scratch. Hello, and welcome to 100 Random Tasks. I'm your host, Philip Lett, and if you like what you see here, please give us a like and leave a comment. And subscribe if you want to be notified when more videos are uploaded, and it would really help the channel. Looking at the current outline, you can see the program counter and address register. Both are 8 bits and connected directly to the internal data bus, which is also 8 bits. If the registers are expanded to 16 bits, it's not possible to completely load either register with an 8-bit bus. So a method of being able to load 16 bits is needed. To do this, we're going to create an address control block. It contains the program counter and address registers as before, except that they are now 16 bits wide. In addition to these are two new registers, temp low and temp high. Each of these are 8 bits wide and connected to the internal data bus as the other registers in the CPU. However, the outputs of these two are combined to create a 16-bit bus. In this way, it's possible to generate any 16-bit value depending on the contents of these two registers. There also needs to be a way of controlling what data is loaded into the program counter or address register depending on what instruction is being executed. During an instruction fetch, the address register needs to be loaded with the program counter. But during a jump instruction, the program counter needs to be loaded with the value that's stored in the TL and TH registers. As well, during a store instruction, the address register needs to be loaded with the TL and TH registers. This can be done by using a MUX with one input being the combined TL and TH registers and the other input being the program counter. The output of the MUX then feeds the inputs to the program counter and address register and is controlled by the AB select line. One thing to note is that the address register has an AR increment line where the original did not. Adding this will allow us to remove one of the instruction actions saving a clock cycle and speeding up most instructions by 25%. The small amount of logic that is added by including this is worth it for the performance increase. We'll see how in a bit. The CPU schematic is looking a little cramped, and there isn't enough room to add the new registers with their connections. So instead I'll create a Verilog file that will contain the address control outline that we just looked at, and add it to the CPU as a single block. We can set all the inputs and outputs from the outline. There are only two outputs and 10 inputs, including the clock and reset. The two outputs are registers, and so need to be defined as such. The temp L and temp H registers are internal to the block, so need to be created to ensure that they are eight bits each. An internal wire is also needed. This wire will be the output of the MUX and is what will be used to set the program counter and address register and will be called bus 16. Lastly, a local parameter is used to define a reset vector. For now it is set to zero since the program will start running at address zero on reset. This is called a bottom-up style CPU. In a later video, this will be changed to a top end of memory and the CPU will load the address that it should start running at and this is configuration is called a top-down CPU. There are a few other things that will be changed as well, but for now we'll leave it as is.
Next is the usual always block to catch the clock or reset edges, and as before, the reset will have priority. And here the program counter and address register are reset to the reset vector, in this case, 0. If there is no reset, then there's been a clock pulse, so it checks the state of the control lines. If the TL load line is set, it loads the temp L register with the value on the data bus. The temp H register works the same. It is possible to load the same value into each register in one step this way. For the program counter and address registers, only one of the control lines should be set, but to cover the possibility of both being active, they are placed in a if-else-if block. If the increment line is set, the value of that register is incremented by 1. If the load line is set, then the register is loaded with the value that is on the bus 16 wire. Finally, there are two assigned statements with the question operator. This will be the mux in the outline, and each statement controls what data is on the lower and upper part of the address to be loaded. The first says that if select is 1, then the lower 8 bits of bus 16 are the lower 8 bits of the program counter. If select is 0, then it will be the contents of the temp L register. The second assigned statement is identical, except that it uses the upper 8 bits of the program counter and the temp H register. That's it for the address control block. Those few lines of code emulates the outline from earlier. From that, I'll create the schematic block, and it's ready to be used in the CPU. Only a few changes are needed here. First, remove the existing program counter and address register, as well as the lines that are no longer needed, and place in the newly minted address block in position and connect up the data bus, clock, and reset lines. then the 8-bit output buffer needs to be replaced with a 16-bit version. Also, the address bus output has to be updated to 16 bits as well. Lastly, add the control lines and labels. The program counter output is unconnected for now. The existing instructions have no need for it, but in a later video, when the call instruction is added, the program counter will need to be saved and it will be used then. With that done, the control block needs to be updated to use the new address block. The original state outline shows that fetch1 loads the address register from the program counter. In fetch2, it loads the instruction register from memory and increments the program counter. 
Then in the next state for all instructions, it again loads the address register with the program counter that was just incremented. If instead we also increment the address register at the same time as the program counter, we can remove state count 2 completely, which is why we added the address register increment control line. Looking at the new state outline, there is still a fetch1 and fetch2, but fetch2 now includes ar equals ar plus 1, and load a1 is now what load a2 was originally. Plus, it only uses three clock cycles instead of four, giving that 25% performance boost. The add a instruction is changed in a similar way. Now we have to adjust the store a and jump instructions to accommodate for the new 16-bit bus. Fetch 1 and 2 are the same as before. Store A1 now loads the temporary low register from memory instead of directly into the address register. And it also increments both the program counter and address registers. Store A2 loads the temp H register from memory and increments the program counter. It's not necessary to increment the address register since it's about to be changed in the next state anyway. Store A3 then loads the address register with the combined values of the TL and TH registers. Finally, in Store A4, the contents of the accumulator are saved to memory. The jump instruction is similar except it loads the program counter with TL and TH instead of the address register. From this, we can update the control line chart to now include the new control lines AR increment, TL load, TH load, and the AB select lines. I've been using paper for now, but if you're adding a lot of instructions, a spreadsheet is definitely the way to go. I won't go into all the details of the updated chart, but you can see where I've added the new actions according to the new state outline. In the control block, I'll add the four new output control lines first. Then I'll go through each assigned statement one by one and update them to reflect the new updated control line chart. Lastly, I'll create the four new assigned statements for the new control lines. You should have a good idea on how to create these, so I won't go into details on them. On the schematic side, the control block needs to be updated and the label set. I'll do that now. Finally, the last change to be made is in the constraints file. Since the CPU is now 16 bits, the address bus 7 needs to be changed to 15 because the store instruction in the program will be changed to address 8000 instead of 80. So we have to monitor that uppermost bit. Everything else will remain the same. 
then implement and generate the programming file. Coming in on the home stretch now, the last thing before we can test it on the existing circuit is to update the program from the last video to use the 16-bit address bus. The program has four instructions. Load zero into the accumulator, add one to the accumulator, store the accumulator at the 8-bit address 80, and jump back to add one again for a total of eight bytes. The new program has the same first two instructions, but the store and jump instructions have 16-bit operators, making the program two bytes longer for 10 bytes. The disassembly shows this with the operator for both in little Indian format. With the updated program in hand, let's program it and see if it works. The Spartan is programmed and ready to go, so I'll input the new program into RAM. Now that it's programmed, I won't stop at every state count. Instead, I'll just mention when we're doing a reading and a writing from the memory. So starting with address zero, we're reading a value of zero. Address one is reading a value of zero. Address two then reads the value one. Address three is reading a value one as well. Address 4 then reads the value 2, which is now the beginning of our store A instruction. Address 5 is reading the low byte of the memory, which is 0, and this will be stored in the TL register. Address 6 is reading the value 80, and this is going to go into our TH register. Now the next clock cycle should show us our write into address 8000. And there we have it. Our initial accumulator is zero, or is one, sorry, being placed on the data bus. Our address is 8000, because remember that the far left LED here is pointing to bit 15 of the address, and we're writing. So in the next clock cycle, our value on our output port should be one. And there it is. Now it reads the value three for the jump instruction from address seven the value 2 from address 8, and finally value 0 from address 9. The next two clocks will load the address 2 into the program counter. Now the program counter should be 2, and on the next clock it should be shown on the address bus. There we are, back to address 2, ready for the next loop. If everything is good, if I let the clock free run, it should count, just like last time. The CPU is really coming along now. There's still one last major component yet to be added. That's the ability to call subroutines. But in order to do that, there needs to be a way of pushing and pulling the current program counter address, and to do that, it needs a stack, as well as a call and return instructions. So that will be the topic for the next video. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to get notified when I upload new videos, and it really helps the channel. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you. Your support means a lot. And if you like what I do here, consider becoming a patron to help me make more great content for you to enjoy. Thanks for watching. See you next time.